Okay, so here I am. I'm going to tell you the story about the portholes on the Yorktown and not having the portholes on board the Ticonderoga. Um, captain Gilbert was a great captain. Uh, rest in peace. He passed away back maybe, uh, I think it was 2006. Really, really good guy. But I've been asked this question before. Um, when I was teaching at ATRC, I got asked at one time and I kind of blew off. You know, just Ticonderoga, you know, how you'll have the rivalry between the two ships and stuff like that. We did it later when I was on the Arleigh Burke and the Barry, you know. The first ship is always the hardest one to get out of the yards. Um, and you got to respect those guys that got through that one. Um, and a great class of ships, CG-47 was. But uh, here's the deal. Ticonderoga didn't have portholes. Yorktown, Vinnie, Valley Forge, the Gates, Bunker Hill, so 52, was when they officially became part of the, we're going to build them this way to have portholes in it. And, and let, me, let me tell you a little story about this. I have, a, I have a person that I talk to from time to time, really, really good friend. Uh, that I get messages back and forth from. And I sent him a picture and I said, hey, listen, Tycho on the left, Yorktown on the right, take a look at the portholes. Can you tell me anything about it? And this person just happened to be, you know, an officer on board uh, Yorktown uh, up through the commissioning process. And after that, he left right around the same time I got there. So I said, uh, uh, let's see. Portholes in the captain's cabin. Do you know if Captain Anderson was the reason they put the portholes in there? Because I'd always been told he was. And he said, Jim, I was there when he came in and exclaimed. I came up with a brilliant idea while I was in the shower this morning. Totally Carl. It seemed he derived his best inspiration while in the shower. <laughs> totally Carl. Love you, Captain Anderson. Love you. Uh, uh, let's see. He would pass new inspirational information after he came out of the shower. Blah, 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 blah. And he told the XO that we should have, uh, we should put those portholes in there. And he'd like to work on that for the day. Finally, a department head, which I have the name, which I will not disclose because that would not be appropriate. Said, told the XL, Billy, um, Billy Cornett, Bill Cornett, Captain, um, the, I, the, the captain's ideas are just that and probably can't be changed. Things sort of settled down there a little bit after that, but guess what? When we went to commissioning, there were two windows in Carl's bedroom. Now, the reason that he wanted to do that, and uh, uh, I went in and had a conversation further on that, was Captain Anderson, if you remember, uh, was a mariner as far as Merchant Marine Academy and all that kind of stuff goes. What's really important to them, and I've taught at the Naval Academy and I've done all that kind of crap, what's really important to them is like a seaman's eye and understanding what's going on. And he wanted to be able to open up that door to take a look out to see if the contact report was right or make sure that everything was okay as far as his ship went if he's just sitting in plane guard. And I, I can't, you know what, can't begrudge him at all for that. think it was a great idea. And just having the safe uh, peace of mind before you go to bed at 2300 at night because the guy used to stay up, you know, 20 hours a day. To be able to open up the door and say, okay, there's a coral sea, we're all good, everything's fine, everything's the way it's supposed to be, and then close the hatch back down. That's pretty cool. Good to talk to you guys. This was on the 18th of January, 2020. I encourage my other friends here on Facebook, on the Yorktown page, to put some stories up. I'd love to hear them. See you later. Bye.